right. Perfect. Can you guys see it okay? Yeah, yep. we got you. Yeah, sure. uh, so I'm just going to talk about a bunch of stuff to get rolling with uh, and then talk a little bit about um, why we need condensed formations and things like that and just some things that I want, I want to just share with you guys. Some things that as you, as you put together game plans and stuff like that, stuff that I picked up, I guess it's over 40 years now. This is part of a PowerPoint I used two or three years ago. Uh, I, at the first point I want to make, talk about condensed formations because it allows you to get the ball to the flank. And my humble opinion, the hardest thing to do in football is to tackle someone in space. And I, I'll debate it with anybody. Uh, Coach Kempton, I'll defer to you. Uh, would you agree with that, sir? Hundred uh, percent. And again, I, I've done some. You're gonna like these words. Some statistical analysis over the last two or three years, just looking at different videos, whether it's my own, whatever it is, and and basically what it comes down to is three things. One, if the defender is better than the off the guy in space, the offensive guy in space, fifty over fifty percent of the time, that offensive player is going to make positive yardage after contact. He's going to take a two a two yard play make it a four-yard play, and half the time is going to be a complete miss, a complete whip, and you're going to have an explosive. Those stats go up when it's 50, when it's even, a, a, a one defender and an offensive player, and they're even in, in skill level. And again, that's my, as I'm evaluating, it's not 100% accurate. Well over two-thirds of the time, that offensive play is going to make a, a big play. And when you've got a dude, we've all been there. And I'll use some of the guys that, that were around a couple of years ago with Anthony Bracamonte, a little, a little running back, a little slot from, um, from Thornton Academy. The number of guys he made missing space and big, big made big plays is amazing. So uh, we really want – that's why I'm talking about this today. Get the ball to your playmakers in space. Uh, create space any way you can, whether it's in the C-gap and, 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 out, and out, out further from the perimeter. And I think you got an off, an awful, a, an awful good opportunity to make some big plays. It's awful difficult to go four yards apart for ten or fifteen plays in a row and score. You have to have some explosives, and uh, this hopefully I'll show you some ways today using a condensed formation uh, to be able to get the ball to the perimeter. Some other and along those lines, I'm, I'm kind of going to go go all over the place with the. Uh, with the screen that's in front of you, you go all the way to the bottom, uh, make tackle guys cover, cover guys tackle. I said, find the neck roll. Well, for most of you friggin' young guys, you have no idea what a goddamn neck roll is. Okay? Kempi's just about old enough to remember this. Back in the 60s and 70s, in order to be able to protect your neck, they used to have literally two or three inch round foam pads you put around your neck. That was a neck roll. Well, those were worn by defensive linemen and linebackers. And if you, saw, if you saw a defensive back wearing a neck roll, that was the guy you were going to pick on all day long, trying to get his butt fired. Okay, so we want to try to take that guy who's a tackle guy and make him either cover or make plays in space. Somehow, schematically, whatever you want to do in your offense, to make that happen. Try to get an athlete on your, in your program one-on-one -on -one with that tackle guy. By the same token, we want to make cover guys tackle. Okay, in most situations, if you're talking especially about your third-level guys, you generally put your best tacklers where? At safety. Okay, they're the guys that you're going to try to get in the box. In most situations, your corners suck. Okay, it was especially true in the NESCAC, okay, when I was there for years. Okay, we were going to make a mistake not blocking someone on the perimeter. It was going to be a corner. And, and our, our kids, our, our slot backs were good. There were certainly better skilled guys as some of our teams, and invariably, 60 or 70, 80 percent of the time, those those corners were not going to make an open field tackle. If they did, it was by an ankle, and we're still making five yards. I mean, how many times, going back to my earlier thoughts, you watch a team uh, throw a bubble screen, uh, jailbreak, whatever you want to call it, and it really looks like the defense is fitted in perfectly, and all of a sudden you look up as second and six. I don't know about you guys. But as an OC, I like second and six. Okay, I really do. And the bottom line is it ain't all about being pretty. It's about moving the chains. Okay, again, make the defense run sideline to sideline. Okay, by getting the ball on the perimeter, you're making those guys go from one hash mark 
to the far sideline, run their butts into the ground, challenge their conditioning, challenge their mental and physical toughness, and see if they can do that for four quarters. Right? I think that right? we saw that a ton again when I was at base working with Kempe, uh, all those things again. Uh, but I think that's really again get speed and space, get your playmakers involved. Well, obviously, you want to be able to do that. A couple other thoughts I just want to share. Uh, in terms, not so much about getting the ball in space, but just in terms of putting your, your game plan together, what do you do with your backup quarterback? One of the things that I learned again when I was at base, we went through it a couple times. We got to play a freshman. It, are you going to be able to use the same play sheet with a freshman quarterback or a kid that's not ready as you do your senior? I literally would type up a separate menu in the event that my starting quarterback went down and I stuck it in my back pocket. I didn't want it on the play sheet because that's way bad karma, but it was always there. So I knew right now, and it was mostly – in, in the passing game, but I get, I want to write down those three or four things that I knew that kid could do really well. Because I don't, I don't want to be in a game in the middle of the third quarter and my starter goes down and I have to, I got my, my play sheet in front of me. Is that, is that backup going to be the, do the same thing as your starter? That's a question. I, I think I'll, I'll, from this point on, if I'm ever an offensive coordinator again, that's what I want to be able to do. Have that backup game plan there. Okay. Anybody got any questions? Yep, you're awful quiet. Well, I got a question for you later, though. All right. And I got to see if I go down. All right. Now, oops, here we go. Now, my topic today is why condensed formations? Right. Again, this is not, this is not an, an entire offensive philosophy. It's not an offense. It's just some thoughts that maybe you can adapt and add to your offense to make it a little bit more effective. Why? Okay. Number one, allows you to get, allows you to, get to the edge quicker. I figured this out by chance back when we were running triple option. And we would come out and we're having, again, certain teams, we're having trouble getting, getting the ball to the edge. So we came out and we went no splits with our offensive line, the tight end side. And we, and we ran inside V or inside triple, but because we, we, we condensed everything down, now the, the guy that was normally, would normally be our pitch key and had been told all week, especially in a 50 defense, He's got the quarterback. Now, all of a sudden, that dive back's going at him right now. We didn't have to change any footwork, nothing for our offensive line. And now, all of a sudden, if our quarterback pulled after three steps, he's, on, he's, he's in the alley right now. And if we did pitch the ball, it was for a big play. Just a very simple way to change up. And that's how we kind of figured it out. And then as, as we continue to progress, we did some other things. Okay, gives, gives, you, gives you blockers better angles. And that goes along with the third one. You can utilize smaller players to block larger players. Okay, if you don't have a true tight end, this is a way to be able to, to block the edge with a with a one iron and still be able to get and still be able to run whatever your outside plays might be. For me, it was jet sweep, it was it was it was lead option, okay, and a little bit of outside zone. But I think that's it's a way of, of taking a kid that's 100 and like at base, we had a receiver that was 190 pounds. And he would easily pin a five technique that was, that was 250, okay? Looking at it from a defensive perspective, it can impact your run fits, especially your perimeter run fits and your pursuit angles. Everything happens a lot quicker. It happens right now. And I get, hopefully, if I, if I can get some tape set up later, I'm going to show you a couple of clips where it looks like the defense is going to be there, they're filling, and all of a sudden there's so much field, they take a bad angle and we're able to leverage them. Again, it allows you to condense the defense, forces them to come in, and allows you to better utilize, it, in particular, the high school hash marks. If you think about it, fellas, if you go with, with the condensed formations I'm going to show you, the edge of the offense is probably not even, not even to the upright. It's probably four yards from the hash mark. If you think about it, you've got almost two-thirds of the field to offer. That's an awful lot of space. If that ball bounces, in particular, you've got a couple kids that can run, that really puts the defense in a, in a bind. It's really difficult to defend. Okay, again, going back to it, it's something else for them to prep for. Okay, you may use it, you may not. I like it, it's unbalanced. You know, there are some, some weeks we would use it, whether it didn't matter whether I was, we were in the wing tee, run the wishbone, run the eye, and now obviously getting back to triplet baits, 
it, it depended on what we felt like it was going to be effective for us. And again, something else, they've got to spend four or five, maybe 10 minutes just getting friggin' lined up. And again, I like to use, continue with, with a game plan type of thing, come back with it when we're trying to use tempo. We got, we got it rolling, we go no huddle, we line up in a condensed formation, force them you know, as quickly as they can to recognize it and get lined up. Challenge them that way. Uh, and again, I think it really is, as much as, as crazy as it sounds, it adapts well to the passing game. Okay, in particular, play action, but also for the quick game. And again, uh, really creates natural, I sound like a freaking offensive guy now, natural rubs versus man to man. I hate this because McLeod's sitting right next to me. <laughs> hate this. But no, it gives you a real natural, the ball comes out quick, protection's really solid, and I think it can be, it can be extremely, extremely effective. What I plan on doing right now, you see on the board, I've got three, one formation with the three basic fronts you're going to see. We'll start with the, the, the conventional 4-3, which we saw a lot when I was at Bates. Uh, the the, the 5-2 or the 3-4, whatever the hell you want to call it. The odd front, and then and a typical 8 man front or a typical 4-4 uh, four, four defense. Okay, Go through the, the three or four different things that I think you make it work in your offense. We'll start with Jet. Okay, I really like that the lead option is kind of like it's a, it's a pre, pretty much a prescribed quarterback run. They still got a fit for the for the for the for the uh, for the for the pitch man. You have some guys you don't have to block. Again, a complimentary play for us. It was wide dive. But if you're not an option guy, you can adapt it to again a play that you you watch. A wing T guys run a lot, which is the, the the belly G. Hit it nice and tight. And again, I think it's some things. And I'll also show you a couple of simple things you can do uh, from, from from with play action pass and the quick game. Anybody got any questions? Yeah, Skip, let me ask you a question now. And this is for you first and foremost. And um, if you want to defer it to later on, that's fine. It's also, now that I got all you offensive guys between Hathaway and Lip and McLeod and Friedman on here, there's no better group to ask. One of your points on here is run fits uh, to the defense. One of the things that drives me crazy is a tight end wing in any condensed formation with a tight end wing. That's probably one of the hardest things, and I don't care what defense you run, is how you're going to fit that tight end wing uh, formation with what you're doing. So what, what, are you, what are you looking for? What are you guys looking for for a response from the defense when you condense your formation with a tight end wing? So maybe you'll address that in these – things but that's I can yeah one, one of the things that we did at base we we are, are we didn't have it as you know Kevin we didn't have a true tight end in the offense which is why we got the condensed formation like I'm going to show you on the board but we also went tackle over right that would be like our tackle tackle with our slot back as a wing right and sometimes it was end over as well and it just creates another angle so that was when we were going to run wide dive or again you could run belly g you know, and look, and based on angles, block everything down and get, and get to the perimeter right now. Yeah. Tackle, right? Slot, yes. tackle slot isn't a tight end wing. I want to, when you create an extra gap, like what are you guys looking for a response from the defense as well? It's all, I'm looking for, I'm looking for angles. If everything, yeah. if everything's bunched up inside, we're going to block everything down. We're going to use, we're going to you know, use our dive back, uh, obviously to block off the edge and we're going to run jet. Okay. If, 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 if we've got a space between the outside the wing and in the C gap, again, we're going to block everything down. We're going to run wide diving and put that, play, that, that edge player, linebacker, whoever was the quarterback guy, make, put him in conflict. So, again, you do the same thing with belly. If they're giving you that, that, that C gap, D gap area because they want to try to contain with a guy in line of scrimmage, block everything down, pull the guard, and now you can, again, keep that fullback nice and tight, what I tell my, my fullback or, or dive back to do is run through the backside shoulder of a scraping linebacker. Because again, if you run jet, 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 what's that kid going to do? He's going to friggin' scream. Okay? And now you've got a kid cutting back. And again, one of the principles I talked about earlier, get the defense going east and west as you're going north and south. So now you got, now you got, now you got, everything looks like jet with motion. Now you're going to hit that dive back nice and tight to the inside crack of the tight end, block everything down, insert the wing wherever he can, 
either around or inside of the enemy on the line of scrimmage and run that, that CD gap downhill. That would be my answer. Yeah, I, I can chime in. I, the first thing I'm going to look for if you're an odd front guy is if you're going to shade the front that way to cover for the extra gap. So if you're going to shade the front that way, I'm going to run weak. You know, well, the other I'm, thing I'm, is, it, 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 again, building on what, what, what Mike said, I, uh, with the formation I'm going to show you, where are they going to put the defensive end, the, the, the outside linebacker, whatever you want to call it? Is he going to be outside as I get up on the ball? That's, let's talk about it right now. Yeah, uh, that's, what, I, that's, what I, that's what I want to know is what you guys like for a response this right from the defense and where we're putting people. All right, guys, you got me? So you see what I've got? I've got the traditional 4-3. I've got the, the, the 50 deep, and I'm only drawing up the front side. And I've also got the 4-4. And I can come back and show you a couple of complimentary things that we did if they started to overshift. All right? So, again, here, our basic rule by the end, we're going to take a nasty split anywhere from a, from a yard and a half to two yards, whatever we're going to get. Again, once, once the DN declares he's going to be inside, we're in good shape. Pretty simple. We're down, pin the end. We're going to crush him and come off to the Mike linebacker. If we can, we're going to step around and we're going to block linebacker to safety. Okay, linebacker to safety. Okay, we've got our dive back. He's going to clean up. He's looking inside to outside. And the other thing we look for is the depth of the secondary. Okay, if they're going to play those guys at five yards. I'm telling you right now, we're going to run jet, run the ball a couple times, and then we're going to play action. We, we want to look at what the, what the corner is going to do. If he's coming up hard right now, we're going to, we're going to end up throwing the football once in a while to get, get them back. Again, we're going, to, we're going to go full zone here. And, we, and again, we're going to block the most dangerous. And again, if, we, if the corner comes up, we're going to reach him, and then we're going to bring the jet outside. Does that make sense? We good with that? Yes, no? We good, Kempi? Absolutely. You know? And again, again, look at the angle. He's tighter. And again, you're thinking about two thirds of the field. You're lining up to the big field. That that puts a lot of stress on the safety and the corner. Okay, even even, even if they bring the corner outside, we're going to kick him out, and we're going to make a 90 degree cut. Which again, we've created what? We've created space. This kid doesn't know where the friggin' ball is going to hit. So what's he doing? He's screaming downhill. I will take that matchup and that matchup all the time. And he's going to, he may make a couple of tackles, and one time he's going to overrun, and we're going to put the ball in the end zone. Or as you see on tape, hopefully he gets cooked. He takes that inside angle, and now we'll run to the sideline. Does that make sense? Yes, no, yeah. problem. Okay. So that's the 4-3. That's the now, my, getting back to what you're saying, Kevin, you want to see where they want to put the edge guy in, in an odd defense. Okay, is he going to be inside our end or outside? Well, number one, we're going to force him to get inside by his width. If they want to play games and try to play him head out, we're going to keep widening that split until he comes inside. Okay, if not, we'll widen the sideline and we'll run inside all day long. But again, we're going to get that end inside. Same concept. We're down. Okay, we're going to zone here. Now we're going to get around to the safety. Okay, dive back's going to block the corner, and we're out the gate. Pretty, pretty simple play. But what I like about it is, is that if even out of the pistol, as you can go with, with a slot, with a, with a wide number one away, you force that, that safety to stay over here. You don't get the ninth guy in the box, and you can do it without motion. I think, which I think is pretty good. Snap the ball and go. We good? All right, now, the 4-4, four, four, same deal. We're down on the five. We're zoning that here. We're scooping, stepping around, blocking the outside linebacker. Okay? And we're going to, in the, in the, the dive back, we'll make, we'll make the slot back correct. Worst case, we'll get a double on this, come off, and we got space. Again, by having... Width here forces that free safety to stay probably closer to the middle of the field than on the hash mark. Does that make sense? 
We good? Yes, no. Somebody answer, please. <laughs> I want you guys to add your goddamn. They're good. Uh, we're, we're good. good. We're good. We're good. All right. So again, that's good just coach. yeah. Simple. Okay, out of uh, out of a condensed formation. Okay, you're taking a kid who's again. It could literally. We had a kid last year. It was 150 pounds soaking wet. Okay, he wasn't any tougher, quite frankly. Like, he was a great athlete, but no tougher than this Lysol. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna eat it either. Because guess he's been able to make you drunk. Okay. <laughs> Watch and, it. Uh, uh, but again, he would come down and seal a fire technique. Okay. The compliment to that, if you really want to take it to another level, which we started to at Bates, and guard up against the 4-3 defense, playing corners, again, because we're, because we're balanced, they're going to stay balanced. Okay? We're going to come down. Now we're going to use the pin and pull here. We're still going to reach this. Trying to get to the mic, but now we can pull that, the slot back and the tackle. Like that even better. Get your uh, an extra guy to the point of attack. Now you're blocking linebacker, you're blocking safety, you're blocking corner, and now you're out the gate. Again, with no motion. And again, you can do the same thing with the 50 defense. It doesn't make now, now the only change is if they're going to give you this. Okay, now rather than pulling the tackle, we'll block base here, we'll scoop this. Okay, we're down, we're around, and we just pull the guard. It's pretty simple. Well, like a minor, minor change. Okay, we got that? Again, condensed formation. As I was saying earlier, I think you have to try to get your quarterback to be part of your offense. You don't want to play 10 on 11, so if you can't, if he's a runner, Again, a great way. Again, some of this stuff, fellas, I've got a little bit of it on tape. Before I left base, we had spent some time at Army. If you, if you look at any, a lot of the stuff that they're doing now, they're still running triple option, but they're running a lot of condensed formations, and they're running the ball with their quarterback a lot. Okay, so you've got a running quarterback. Again, some of this stuff is very, very applicable. Now I'll draw it up against the 4-3. Now we're just going to run lead option. Again, give them a different look. You got your end, nose, there, corner safety. Nothing up front changes. Nothing up front. We're coming down on the end. We're here to there. We're scooping this. Okay, we're not blocking anybody on the backside. No one. Okay, we, we are hoping that we turn and run, and these guys are trailing from behind. Motion or no motion doesn't matter. We're getting here. Court, uh, slot back, stepping around to block the linebacker. Dive backs blocking most dangerous. Quarterbacks downhill. What? Why is that any different than Jack? No, when he can, when the ball gets to this point, you have no idea what's happening. Now the safety's screaming. Now you got your quarterback in the alley. That makes sense. Downhill right now. Attack the alley. You're sealing this off, and you're off, you're off, you're off, off and running. Okay, everybody's good. Because now, again, if you can put the – and you can change – great thing is you can change up who you want to block. One time you put the dive back on the safety, the next time you put the dive back on the corner. Simple adjustment. Ball's on the perimeter 99% of the time. Tell the quarterback, <laughs> keep – unless it's a, a quarterback run. Does that make sense? Pretty good stuff. Same thing again. It's just good against a, a 50 defense with a condensed nose or whatever you want to call it. Whatever, back of here, safety corner. Okay, again, he's inside. We're gonna block his up, block his butt. I can't swear. I apologize. Okay, we're zoning this up, stepping around, linebacker safety, dive back. Motion downhill. Say safety's been told all week, take the pitch. Now we're in the alley. If you want to block him, that's great. Pretty simple stuff. The compliment that I, that I really, really like, you get those guys running. Draw it up against the even front first. Okay, well, now we're going to say we've got the, they want, they want to widen that linebacker. 
and she's killing them. Now you're going to run, again, we ran wide beer. You're not an option team, so what? You still want to be able to hit that C gap. Okay, so now we're just going to run belly G. Nothing changes here. Only difference is he's down. He's going to pull and trap. He's around for the safety. It's going to look just like, it's going to start to look just like jet, jet or option. Okay, side step, downhill, outside hit for the tackle. Give him the ball, take off. This kid's been thinking, Jet, what's he going to do? He's going to run outside. Now you've got your space. Even better against the, against the, uh, the, the, uh, the odd front. Okay, now, Ben wants to go outside. Safety is inside. Doesn't matter. Nose, end, backer, same deal. Here, there, check inside. Step around and seal. Pull and trap. He screams. He's downhill. Simple out of one formation, you can adapt it to your offense, pretty good stuff. Now, what do you do? You get a compliment as far as the run game. And okay, we've given them this condensed formation. They want to start to slide, the, they want to start to say we're in twins. They want to start to slide the front. So they bring this guy over in a tight shade and a 4 3 defense. End is here, corner, safety starts to come over. They want to roll the cover three. Okay? Bring him, you run him by, and now you can run, you can run lead, either lead option. I like quarterback sweep back to the single receiver side. Why? Okay. I take my reach step. What's that end going to do? Coach Kemp, he's going to run like hell, right? He's going to, he doesn't want to get reached. Okay, we'll go, we'll, do, we'll keep this tight, split as tight as we can. So our center can scramble block the nose guard. We're going to take our zone step. That linebacker is going to want to run. We're going to stay on track. We're going to block the mic. He's off the edge. Quarterback pauses downhill. If the end runs, he takes four yards. If we hook him, he stays to the sideline. We're in that probably 14 or 15 times when I was at base, he probably made probably ran for like nine yards of carry. It's, just, it's pretty simple. I guess the same thing with the odd front. It doesn't really make any difference. They want to shade the front. We're in pretty good shape. Questions? Coach Kempton, you're pondering. I'm pondering. I'm pondering you. Okay. <laughs> good stuff. Another, good stuff. Another, again, if you've got a great running quarterback, okay, again, you can go with the offset. I'm not a sidecar guy. That's why, well, guys, I'm always in this. OJ versus the 4-3. Four, 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 you can go QB sweep. Or QB zone, whatever the hell you want to call it. Nothing changes. Okay? We're zoning. We're down. Okay? We're here to the mic. Step around. Dive back. Quarterback gets the ball and runs downhill. Okay, get those. There's a four or five or six different plays you can run. Okay? From the C gap out with a kid of 150 pounds blocking down in a five technique. Pretty, pretty simple stuff. If you're, if you're an outside zone team, you're, you run jet sweep, whatever it is. And again, think about this, putting it that to, to the big field really gives, really gives you some, some, a, a lot of field to work with. Hey, Coach. Yes, sir. What are your thoughts in the pass game when, uh, when you condense to one side? What do, you, what do you like to see? Okay, first thing we do, we were, uh, I think, in the two or three years we did this, the last two years when we were at Bates, we were, we were four for four on this particular route, okay? Again, they want to start bringing that corner and safe down versus the four three. All right, gotta get, it doesn't matter what we got. We're gonna, we're gonna run jet, we got run jet pass, or we're gonna run fear pass. Again, inside release, okay? We're reading the safety. Okay, chance out this corner is going to want to come up, and all he's doing is reading the release of, of the end who's going inside all the time. We're going to go, we're going to get vertical right now. If the safety bites, it's a pipe shot. 15 yards tossing the ball. If the safety bails around, then we run a wheel. The addition that we got from Army is they bring this guy in motion, they fake the jet, he sprints, turns around, and backpedals. So now as I come off the mesh, I don't like what I've got. Boom, I can open. Pretty good technique and throw the ball to the flat. You've always got a check down. Like that a lot. 
Yeah, hey, I'm no genius. I'm, I'm no genius, Skip, but if I'm four for four, I might throw it a fifth time. Oh, for what? Portland. That's no shit, huh? <laughs> okay. Um, other things we like uh, off of, again, we can do the same thing. Okay, off of beer, off, off of that belly G, we're down. Okay. We're kicking out, faking, faking option, the same, the same thing. Like eating the very, very simple routes, still reading the safety. Can't call it on third and ten, Jay. Okay, off off a quick. We really liked the vertical in the flat right now. Think about they're playing cover four in the four three. He goes vertical. Where's the corner going? He's gone right now. The line, especially if that linebacker wants to stay inside, that flat's wide open. And we threw that a number of times as well as a changeup again. If they're playing, if they're playing tight coverage, it's really nice. If it's man to man, you got them all the time. Okay, we're good with that. And again, yeah, thanks. Easily, go ahead. Easily with motion, we can literally motion to trips and even all your flood stuff. You can go take off, fifteen yard out in the flat right now. Pretty simple. Protection is easy. That, that, that's, that's the play action game. I think you got to get a, a lot of. A lot of things you can do, and again, sometimes even by just lining up, condensed trips. Okay, you've got all you got your game over here, and you still run Q sweep, all that stuff. They want to tilt the coverage. Now you got one on one coverage with you with your with your X receiver. As I said earlier, now you've got Q sweep back to the backside. It gives you some options. Am I saying it's something you want to run ninety snaps? Absolutely not. But it's certainly a nice change up that you can adapt anything that you do, in particular if you run outside zone, if you run jet. Obviously, your option team works out really well. Uh, and as Kepi was saying earlier, another condensed formation for us. Okay, was tackle over. And we would we'd run either wide beer or jet. Again, it gives them an extra gap to cover. What are they going to do with these two gaps? Backwards. And again, well, I'll show you, this is what shows you how smart I am. Normally, like one of the things I did game plan wise when we in, in the option game, we wanted to find out how they were going to line up every formation and defend the option. So that was my script. We'd go eight formations with plays obviously attached and figure out what they were going to do. So then we knew we knew what our menu was going to be for the day. We're playing bowling for the CBB championship you know, three or four years ago. And somehow, me being the rock science, I mean, I got off writing a script, go figure. You know, I started calling with my heart rather than my brain. So Tino Lopes is, is our quarterback coach, he's the coach. Really late in third grade, listen, we haven't used unbalanced yet. I go, shit. So we line up unbalanced for 21 consecutive plays for 275 guys. How smart am I? Not very. If we should have done it in the first quarter, we would have scored 50. But their alignment out of their 4 3 was to go over and here, linebacker, safety, safety, quarters. They, they, they're done. So we, we, we were in wide dive, washed everything down, put him on the safety, did that, ran, ran to daylight. But 200s, we ran wide beer, we ran jet. Oh, yeah, by the way, we ran beer pass for a touchdown. One for one. That was with a freshman quarterback who also was not any faster than I am, and he ran one of the wide beers for 75 and a touch. So again, though, that's another example of a condensed formation you can use. And I like it in a lockdown with the condensed, but to, to unbalanced. Some weeks you're going to use it, some weeks you're not. Uh, it depends on who you're playing, what you want, what your game plan is that particular week. Uh, we really like that. I think it, it, it brings something else to your offense. No, not a whole lot of any new learning, especially for the guys up front. I mentioned that in my old line talk a couple a week or so ago. Leave the guys up front alone. If you want to screw around with formations and some little things with your skill guys, you can do that, but don't make it any different up front. And that's that's what I got, man. Anybody got any questions? Let's go. You guys can get there you go. What do you think, Kevin? Go ahead, Coach Friedman's up. All right, Coach, what do you got? <laughs> Well, I just 
I'm a, I'm a big fan of condensed formations. I've, I've always liked using them. Uh, I like to see pre-snap how the defense is going to adjust. I love putting a condensed formation to the field and your, maybe your, your slot and your wide receiver to the, to the, to the uh, boundary. Yep. And you just have a lot of room. I love running the curl wheel out of that to that yep. condensed side. You know, that, that back gets lost or that back or that H back, whatever gets lost on the wheel. Sure. Absolutely. We, again, with us, with the, with the even fronts, we were always trying to find the one shape. So try and manipulate ourselves one way or the other. To run to the one shape always helped. Not that we can't run it to the three, but sometimes coming out, we call a double squeeze. We call it this year, we call a double squeeze. Then it was, I think, basically it was Kings, where we had the same formation to the same, to, you know, to both sides. And I'd call it one way or the other. And then it was either the quarterback would look the one chase to my left and we'll call it the right. Gold, gold. We're running that play to the left. Pretty simple. You know, I did like some of the not from this. I saw uh, the other night I was uh, listening to, I think it was Coach Denneke. One of the things they were doing, again, they, they were using a condensed formation just on one side with a four-yard slip with, with the X, running an inside route and just swinging the tailback. As simple as that. And you've got – so they had trips over here. The defense is all that way. So you got a corner and a will linebacker. You got a natural rub versus zone or man. You get some space. Toss your tail back the ball. Who's usually for most of us a pretty good player. That's why he's there. And, it, and that's the, again. I think sometimes no disrespect to half and BL. Sometimes we make the game way too freaking complicated. Get a matchup. Get the guy you like and throw the freaking kid the ball. Or get find a way to get that dude in space. Now, that's just I mean, maybe I'm I'm not nearly as smart as Coach Leppert or Coach Hathaway. I mean that with all due respect. You know, I got my mind doesn't work like that. I think I, I can find a matchup, I can find the fish, I can find the neck roll. But like I used to tell my guys at base, if this is the guy number 75 or 82 or three, we're gonna get his ass fired today. I mean, we want we're gonna beat him up so badly. Mentally and physically, they're going to take him out of the game. No, well, occasionally it was, a, it was a defensive coordinator they didn't like either. That was okay. Uh, other questions, fellas? Any comments? What, anything you want to add? I'm learning here too, so it's all good. I was first, interested in uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Coach. I was just going to say the first uh, passing concept that you showed with um, one of the receivers up the seam and, a, and the other one on a wheel route. Yep. Are you doing that off play action? We we actually uh, most of our most of our 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 pass game was out of play action, usually off a jet. So now we get we get that nice ride and then pop up. And again, it's all based on our guys in the box. How it comes down to how close, how tight are they playing their secondary? If they're playing down, if they're down at five yards, if after two or three plays, well, we're taking a shot. But no other reason, I want to put the friggin' fear of God in them. Oh shit. And then, and then you get the DC yelling at what the hell's going on, and now they they're, now they're not quite as free to come up. So usually, I know the first time we ran a couple times against Colby, we ripped them once they couldn't get lined up. The next time they played it really tight, they had a four yard gain. The next play we ran wheel, and we didn't hit it. We overthrew it, but the bottom line is they they all of a sudden they're back on their heels a little bit. Sometimes that's all you got to take a shot once in a while. But even if you don't complete, just to, just to say, hey, listen, guys, we're going to throw the ball. You know, we're going to, we're going to, well, you better, you better on the pass, or it's going to be one play and a touchdown. Half, what do you got? <laughs> I got like 10 people in the waiting room trying to zoom bomb this thing, I think. So I'm, I'm trying to hit that right now. So hey, listen, I'm not taking out my clothes. I'm not giving you a point today. Sorry. <laughs> you better turn that off. Are, are, we, are we all done filming? Uh, we can be. Yeah, let's bring in, yeah. 